Good afternoon, this is Lucky Lynx, and I'm going to show you something here that sort of just blew my mind, and this is relating to playing cards, numerology, and how the human mind works in relation to the Fibonacci sequence. I'm going to show you a connection here that is rather mind-blowing. Those of you who know the Fibonacci sequence, this, I've got the cards laid out in the Fibonacci spiral, or at least the beginning of the Fibonacci spiral. One, right here, moves up into two, to three, five, eight, up into 13, I've got the jack and the three here is the 13. And then over into, that's 21. Okay. For those of you who've never seen the spiral, I'm gonna show you right here. You got to see right there. Okay, so uh, look up, you can Google a Fibonacci sequence, you can see the spiral. That is the block that I've got it laid out in, okay? This, here is, and I have asserted in other videos that what we're doing when we're doing quote-unquote psychic readings or fortune telling, what we're really doing is we're showing how the cards lay out in the patterns of the human mind. Now this has to do with my understanding of how the human mind develops belief from my experience as a hypnotherapist and in doing hypnotism and working with people with hypnosis for 13 years. Let me show you how this evolves into the state that we currently see things in. Each one of these can show you something in a playing card that shows you how a person has gotten where they've gotten and how you can predict what came before, what will come after. Start at the first piece, that's the one. One is unity, wholeness, okay? In the Fibonacci sequence, it goes one, one. It's wholeness on both sides. Whole, wholeness on the other side, wholeness on the human matter side. Let's just leave it at that. I don't want to get real complicated with that because then we're getting into cosmology. And I'm just going to talk about how we, in the human mind, formless, whole, complete. That's the one the beginning. What happens after the one is the two. Now you know the Fibonacci sequence goes it would be one plus one is two. Okay, So you add the Fibonacci sequence for those of you who don't know the, the number. So the next number in the sequence was two, would be two plus one is three. Then that would be three plus two. You add the previous number to it and that comes five. That's how the Fibonacci sequence works for those of you who don't know it. You can also look up how to do the Fibonacci sequence, but you've got the one, you've got the beginning. Then you've got the duality, the, the object of fascination or the unnatural fixation. Okay, so there's a you and there's an object of your love. That could be a cake, that could be a person, that could be a slice of pizza, that could be a television show you want to watch. That could be an idea. That could be some sense of longing. That could be something missing from your life. A need for purpose creates what we in hypnosis called an unnatural fixation, which causes a trance. For those of you who've ever seen the hypnotist who takes a watch and has someone watch the watch as it swings back and forth, that is the object of unnatural fixation that initiates the trance. Whenever you have your focus on a television, it creates a trance. So we've got the beginning and then we've got the unnatural fixation that forms the trance. Number three, the trance that emerges from the unnatural fixation. This is how the human mind develops. An idea, thing, or want, or desire, or person creates a trance state. That's the three. Okay? The trance or assumption or belief that is made from the experience 
in the trance, the object of fascination in this one, becomes the actual assumption or belief. So you say, hey, I feel like I'm missing something. Therefore, I believe there's someone out to get me. Well, that forms the belief that someone's out to get you. Now there's a trance that you're in. That brings you to the five. Five, for those of you who do cardamancy, usually means change or a restlessness. The restlessness that this belief, this trance, set into motion in a five. There is no four in the Fibonacci sequence. Four would be peace. There can't be peace because if there were peace, there would be no evolution. There would be no growth. Look at a Fibonacci spiral and you will see there is no four. Things were set into motion in this space for that reason. They needed to evolve. They needed to grow. A four would be peace, stagnancy. There is also no six. Six is the number of humans. Humans believe that they're the center of it all. They're not even in the Fibonacci, Fibonacci sequence because they are sort of a figment of their own imagination. From the five, the restlessness that comes from this belief or assumption that came from the fascination creates the need to create a society, a government, or a structure, or bring something into being. Hey, I've got an idea. I know that I need to be the master of chemistry. I believe I'm the master of chemistry. I need to do something about being the master of chemistry. I'm going to set myself up as the king of a university, the head of a department, and feel very important. And those of you who know numerology know that eight is a very important number, and it likes to build structures. It likes to bring things into being, governments, societies. So, someone believes that it's his right to rule everyone. That becomes his trance. His restlessness pushes him to set up a government where he is in control and gets a whole lot of people below him. The eights are groups of people. That brings into uh, play the 13 in the Fibonacci sequence, which according to the Hebrew numeric system, indicates depravity and rebellion that evolves from the new cause or government or filter. So this creates the chaos that follows. All from that original belief that, for example, this man, I believe that it's my right to rule. There's the trance. It's my right to rule. I want to rule people. I see other people. I don't feel good about myself. I need to control other people. It's a me and a them. The trance is, I believe I deserve to rule other people. The restlessness pushes me to do so. I create a government or society or body to rule them. Now there's a depravity that comes over it. Sound like the problems that we're seeing lately with people attacking other people, that people singling people out, people deciding that it's their right to rule them, and the problems that governments and societies and bodies of individuals who believe it's their right to be an enemy of somewhere else or control somewhere else or be over on someone else. There's our 13, and from the 13 evolves into 21, which in the Hebrew numeric system is the exceeding sinfulness of sin and I used two individuals and the death spade here to indicate tw two tens and a 21 21 is the exceeding sinfulness of sin so that would be 13 plus 8 in the Fibonacci sequence okay hope I didn't jump around too much sum up real quick we've got a single beginning we've got a fascination I need to fall in love I am lonely in the one. I need to fall in love. I find someone, I see someone that I think is beautiful. I need to fall in love with this person. That becomes the trance. I'm going to get that person. There is a restlessness to be in love with that person. Once you finally get them, there is a desire to hold it down and to put it into an institution like marriage. After that, there is a restlessness that happens and things sort of, these days you see in relationships, things sort of get very rebellious. One person wants to cheat on the other, walk out on the other. There's no communication because someone's trying to hold too tightly to the other person and make sure that they don't go anywhere. And then what happens? Boom! The other person steps out. This is the natural evolution of how the mind builds, filters, assumptions, beliefs, and it's all here in the Fibonacci sequence, and you can use it in your playing cards. So let's say you threw this and this, and you would say, hey, 
looks to me like this individual had a fascination that resulted in them building a structure that is making them feel separated from themselves. You can use this way of looking at the cards and the way that something might evolve or the mind might evolve to get a better reading on people. You see the four. You know that a four is going to be an illusion. It's only a temporary state. The seven also, there's no seven in that Fibonacci sequence. If this is how the mind evolves, and it is, try it, experiment with it. Look at those numbers that are not there. The nine, they're keys to other things. Play with it, see what you get. Try this, see what you learn from it. Post your answers in the thing below. Ask me any questions that you have. I'll do my best to answer them. And I hope this makes you think. And I hope this makes you look at numbers, numerolo numerology, and your playing cards in a whole new way. If nothing else, it'll make you think a little while, and it'll geek you out when you start to play with it, and you go, wow, there is no randomness to human thought. Wow, when we move away from this unity, things start to happen, and the further away we get, the more complicated it gets. And we try to build our own things to control everything. Where's that eight? We try to make things last. We try to get security, but there is no security. Security is a lie. We try to believe we're these disembodied beings floating around, but that's not even in there either in our, the evolution of our mind. And the six, which is the number of humanity in the old Hebrew um, numerological system, is also not in there. That's a lie. How many lies have we made up to justify the way our minds go about things? The ancient... Tibetans believed and told us that everything was the mind, that we don't even really exist. People are always running around saying, we're all one. There is no us. We're all one. This is how this sort of thing emerges. This is the way the patterns of the mind emerge to create the patterns that show up in your cards. Play with it. See what happens. I hope this sparks some thought. I am Lucky Lynx, wishing you success and good fortune, and I will talk to you soon.